Hello and welcome to this exploring session and today we are continuing our journey through the worlds of Ralph Royster Doister uh, by Nicholas Udall. Uh, we are going from Act 2, Scene 4 today. We're going to be crashing our way through Act 3 and uh, just generally slightly gate crashing into Act 4, but only, only a little bit before we stop for this session. Um, it's uh, so far been deemed, a, the prologue stated that it was a comedy, and so far the room has agreed that it is indeed verily funny. So um, we are hoping that it continues to be funny and that the break of uh, between sessions has not taken the momentum out of the comic moments that uh, the play is affording us. We're hoping that there will be more games, more wordplay, uh, more stuff that a modern audience, modern actors will like to get their teeth into to explore the text. We have this team of adventurers, uh, including a reading today uh, of Ralph Royster Doyster himself is... I am Alan Scott, based in Suffolk in the UK. Reading his not really potential love interest, though she has absolutely no interest in him because she's actually going to be marrying someone else whose name isn't Gavin, but it might as well be. Uh, reading customs today is... Hi, I'm Sarah Blake. I'm an actor, writer and director living in Germany. And uh, reading the part of uh, the, the parasite leeching on Ralph Royster Doyster's stupidity is reading Merry Greek is... Hi, uh, uh, my name's Simon Nader and I'm the absolutely parasitic actor, director and writer living in uh, Ireland. Uh, mm -hmm. Reading a Tibbet, uh, one of the servants and Shoresby, one of the other servants is... Hello, I'm Helen Good, I'm a historian and I'm in London. Uh, reading uh, Ali Face and Scrivener today is. Hi, my name's Elizabeth Macy, I'm one of those that live in Uh Reading True Penny today is. Hello, I'm Lynn Freitas, I'm a teacher, I live in the United States in the Northwest. And uh, also just reading in uh, the music cues, but also uh, ju just generally filling the room with joy and light is. I'm Eric, and I will not sing, I think. Uh, I, I will not impose that upon you. <laughs> and I'm your host, Robert Crichton. Uh, I'm general overseer, occasional stage uh, direction reader, and uh, I'm just generally trying to keep this, the room in some kind of order. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to leap into Act 2, Scene for the story so far of the act, it's the day after um, Ralph Royster has totally failed to engage with uh, the woman he loves, but who has no interest in, in him. And he sent a servant with a, uh, a token to her um, of, uh, to demonstrate his love, but the household, confused, thinks that he's a servant for um, the actual person who is actually going to be marrying uh, uh, Custance. And, uh, and so the, 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 these things are taken on trust. The story continues, and this scene we have the featuring talents of Custance, Tibbet, Aliface, and Troopany, the various uh, servants within the household. Nay, come forth, all three, and come hither, pretty maid. Will not so many forewarnings make you afraid? Yes, forsooth. But still to be a runner up and down, still be a bringer of tidings and tokens to town. No forsooth, mistress. Is all your delight and joy in whisking and ramping abroad, like a tomboy? Forsooth, these were there too, Annette and Troopenny. Yea, but ye alone took it, you cannot deny. Yea, that ye did. But if I had not, ye twain would. You great calf, ye should have more wit, so ye should. But why should any of you take such things in hand? Because it came from him that must be your husband. How do you know that? Forsooth the boy did say so. What was his name? We ask not. Uh, why did you not? He is not far gone, of likelihood. I will see. If thou canst find him in the street, bring him to me. Yes. And they exit, shall uh, troop any exits at that point. Well, you naughty girls, 
if ever I perceive that henceforth you do letters or tokens receive to bring unto me from any person or place except ye first show me the party face to face, either thou or thou, full truly a by thou shalt. Pardon this, and the next time powder me insult. I shall make all girls by you twain to beware. If I ever offend again, do not me spare. But if ever I see that false boy any more, by your mistress's license, I'll tell you a four. I'd rather have my coat twenty times swinged than on the naughty wag not to be avenged. Good wenchers would not so ramp abroad idly, but keep within doors and ply their work earnestly. If one would speak with me, that is a man likely, ye shall have right good thank to bring me word quickly. But otherwise, with messages to come in post from henceforth, I promise you shall be to your cost. Get you into your work. Yes, forsooth. Hence both twain, and let me see you play me such a part again. And exit Tib and uh, uh, Anot um, re-enter Troopany. Mistress, I have run past the far end of the street, yet can I not yonder crafty boy see nor meet? No. Yet I look far beyond the people as one may see out of the top of Pope's steeple. Oh, hence, in at doors, and let me no more be vexed. Forgive me this one fault, and lay on for the next. Now will I in too, for I think, so God me mend, this will prove some foolish matter in the end. And that basically concludes the unit of action that we were doing last time. New people coming in may feel a little disjointed. It's very much completing a unit uh, as we complete Act 2. We just ran out of time yesterday to do it. Um, so, yes, it's very much uh, the, the random message was delivered. Nobody knows who it was from. And we have the first appearance uh, of the word tomboy in, uh, in uh, as far as anyone has ascertained in the English language. So uh, it's, uh, that, that's just a little one I'll throw in there. Uh, and not a lot to say, probably, uh, for anyone new to the session. Any thoughts on this for those who were here yesterday and can join the dots? Uh, any, any thoughts? Sarah? Is this, uh, I'm pretty sure, is this the first time we've actually met Custance? She's been talked about a lot, but we didn't actually see her yesterday, did we? She got a few lines. She popped oh, she in did. very, very briefly, okay. I think, unless I'm wrong there. Yeah. Um, Helen. Uh, the problem is for Custance is that because her servants have accepted this ring, she is deemed to have accepted it. This is, this is her problem. I mean, it may seem that she's being tremendously harsh, though she doesn't actually beat the servants, but she certainly threatens her with it. She may be seen to be being very harsh with them for just taking in a message. But it is slightly more than that because acting as her agents, they have accepted a ring. Mm. Um, yes. That's, that's, that's a one, one we need to really get, we'd need to really get across actually the importance and the, 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 the faux pas and the, the, the awkwardness this situation has created. Um, yeah. You know, and, and it, it suggests from the way the servants are behaving, she's got four months uh, on, on on punishments. <laughs> well, as 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 she should have done. I mean, if you're managing a household full of um, adolescents of both sexes, if you don't lay about you a bit, you're going to have chaos. Yes, and uh, in early modern terms. Yes, um, Alan, I saw her hand. Yeah, I mean, I was just thinking there is a modern parallel on this accepting the ring, and it's the same as if a summons a legal substance summons is delivered to reception of a business it is deemed to have been accepted uh other thoughts question lynn yes so i'm trying to remember did royster doister uh give these tokens and this and and stuff to the servants directly is he the person they're describing as a boy is no, my... no he he sent a servant who they did not recognize because they've met Royster Doyster himself, so it had to be sent by. And they've met, they've met the fiancés, mm. probably. So, 
Is, is, so that's a, a an offstage character. Who? Um, the Roy Royster Doyster's boy. No, no, no. We saw it. It was the it was the Doughty. The, 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 the Doughty. The whole scene with Doughty at the end of the last. He was scene. complaining about his feet and going and coming and on. Yeah, they were shoes. singing. They sang yeah. together. Yeah, they had a merry old time because they thought he was the servant of of the 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 proper affianced. So they were going, "Oh, we've been waiting for you." Oh, you've got stuff. Great, marvelous. Let's sing a song. La 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 la. Um, and uh, much fun was had by all. Well, I think the song went tumpty tumpty tum, didn't it? Uh, no, that was the song that um, that uh, his master was uh, twangled. Uh, tw twangled them twang was. Uh, was the wonderful composition of, of his master uh, that they'd been doing the night before. And, thrum <laughs> and I think uh, Alan's got a point in Thrumpleton, thr thrum thrum Thrumple something, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the, the theme tune of, um, of uh, Ralph Royster Doyster uh, in his love making, uh, lo love wooing uh, music, um, as opposed to the songs that they all just sang together as a, which were presumably just standard community songs. Sounds Other, like Barrett Green. Yeah. <laughs> Other thoughts uh, before we move on let, uh, to get into some meat that everyone can join in on. Okay, let's go into Act Three then. Act Three, Scene One, and it's Matthew Merry Greek gets the floor. Now, I'll say this again. He hath somewhat to doing which followeth the trace of one that is wooing. Especially that hath no more wit in his head than my cousin Royster Doyster with all his let. I am sent in all haste to espy and to mark how our letters and tokens are likely to walk. Master Royster Doyster must have answer in haste, for he loveth not to spend much labour in waste. Now, as for Christian Constance, by this light, Though she had not her troth to go in good luck plight, yet rather than with such a loutish dog to marry, I dare say would live a poor life solitary. But fain would I speak with Constance, if I wist how, to laugh at the matter. Yond cometh one forth now. And indeed enter Tibbet. Ah, oh, that I might but once in my life have a sight of him who makes us all so ill shent. By this light he should never escape if I had him by the ear. But even from his head I would it bite or tear. Yea, and if one of them were not in now, I would bite them both off, both off. I make God a vow. What is he whom this little mouse deuce doth so threaten? I would teach him, I trow, to make girls shent or beaten. I will call her May! With whom are ye so hasty? Not with you, sir, but with a little wage pasty, a deceiver of folks by subtle craft and guile. I know where she is. Dobinet hath wrought some while. He brought a ring and token which he said was sent from our dame's husband. But I wot well I was shent. For it liked her as well, to tell you no lies, as water in a ship or salt cast in her eyes. And yet, whence it came, neither we nor she can tell. We shall have sport anon, I like this very well. And dwell ye here with Mistress Custance, fair maid? Yea, marry, do I, sir. What would you have said? A little message unto her by word of mouth. No messages by your leave, nor tokens forsooth. Then help me to speak with her. Ah, with good will, that. Here she cometh forth. Now speak. Ye know best what. None other life with you made but abroad to skip. Forsooth, here is one would speak with your mistress ship. Ah, have ye been learning of more messages now? I would not hear his mind, but bade him show it to you. In a doors. I am gone. And indeed, Ed Tib exits. Dame Custance, God save ye. God you save. Sorry. Welcome, friend Merry Greek. And what thing would you have? I am come to you a little matter to break. But see it be honest, else better not to speak. How feel ye yourself affected here of late? I feel no manner of change, but after the old raid. But whereby do you mean? Concerning marriage. Doth not love lead you? 
<laughs> I feel no such carriage. Do you feel no pangs of dotage? Answer me right. I don't so that I make but one sleep all the night. But what need all these words? Oh, Jesus, will you see what dissembling creatures these same women be? The gentleman ye wot of, whom ye do so love that ye would fain marry him, if he durst it move among other rich widows which are of him glad, lest ye for leasing of him perchance might run mad, is now contented that upon your suit making ye be as one in election of taking. What a tale is this, that I wot of whom I love? Yea, and he is as loving a worm again as a dove. In a very pity he is willing you to take, because ye shall not destroy yourself for his sake. Marry, God yield his marship, whatever he be, it is gentlemanly spoken. Is it not true ye? If ye have the grace now to offer yourself, ye speed. As much as though I did, this time it shall not need. But what gentleman is it, I pray you? Tell me plain that wooeth so finely. <laughs> Lo, where you be again, as though you knew him not. <laughs> you speak in jest. Nay, sure, the party is in good knacking earnest, and have you he will, he saith, and have you he must. I am promised during my life, that is just. Marry, so thinketh he, unto him alone. No creature hath my faith and troth but one, that is Garwin Goodluck, and if it be not he, he hath no title this way, whatever he be, for I know none to whom I have such words spoken. Ye know him not, you, by his letter and token? Indeed, true it is that a letter I have, but I never read it yet, as God me save. <laughs> ye, a woman, and your letter so long unread? Ye may thy thereby know what haste I have to wed. But now, who is it for my hand? Ah, uh, I know by guess. Ah, well, I say. It is Royster Doister, doubtless. Will ye never leave this dissimulation? You know him not. <laughs> but by imagination. For no man there is but a very dolt and lout that to woo a widow would so go about. He shall never have me his wife while he do live. Then will he have you if he may, so mote I thrive. And he biddeth you send him word by me, that ye humbly beseech him ye may his wife be, and that there shall be no let in you or nor mistrust, but to be wedded on Sunday next, if he lust, and biddeth you to look for him. Doth he bid so? When he cometh, ask him whether he did or no. Go say that I bid him keep warm at home. For if he come abroad, he shall cough me a moan. My mind was vexed, I shrew his head, sottish dot. He hath in his head as much brain as a burbolt. Well, Dame Custance, if he hear you thus play chopperlodge. What will he? Play the devil in the horror lodge. Oh, I defy him. Lout! Shall I tell him what you say? Yea, and add whatsoever thou canst, I thee pray, and I will have vouched whatsoever it be. Then let me alone. We will laugh well, ye shall see. It will not be long ere he will hither resort. Let him come when he lust. I wish no better sport. Fare you well. I will in, and read my great letter. I shall to my wooer make answer the better. And she exits. Um, yeah, we've got some interrupted lines. I like it when people finish other people's sentences. Uh, he <laughs> have in his head as much brain as a burbolt. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, lots of lots of nice uh, back and forth. I, you know, it, it's it's a sort of a hopeless task for Merry Greek. He is sort of trying to put forward Ralph Royster's wishes and desires. Um, but, you know, there isn't a hope in hell. I mean, Custance really has got Doyster's number. <laughs> uh, Sarah first. It's odd, though, because she doesn't seem to have Mary Greek's number. Um, you know, in spite of the fact, you know, she says, yeah, I'm never going to marry him. Um, and Mary Greek's like, yeah, oh, well, you could marry him for my sake because it will really help me out. And she's like, no, in, in spite of all that, she, like, th 
as I was reading those lines at the end, um, yea, and add whatsoever thou canst, I thee pray, and I will avouch it whatsoever it be. I'm thinking, no, don't say that to him, because he's clearly going to twist that into some kind of mischief. Um, so yeah, she's got Ralph's number, but she doesn't appear to have Merry Greeks, which is interesting, I think. Hmm. Uh, Lynn, uh, you're muted at the moment. Uh, uh, and she seems to know Mary Greek because she says, oh, hi, Master Mary Greek. Like, they know each other. Yeah. yeah but what I was thinking, and I'm, and I'm not sure how this all logically parses out, is that it, it actually, I, I'm guessing that Mary Greek does not want um, the match to go forward between Custance and Royster Doyster because if those households merge, um, there goes his gravy train. Because Custance not isn't probably Christian is probably not going to put up with Mary Greeks mooching because uh, she's smart and Ralph Oyster Doyster is not so uh, so I don't think Mary Greek actually wants that uh, Royster Doyster to succeed so I'm I'm not really sure how how it all logically fits together ah the logic of the story um, <laughs> Helen. If you go back to the last two lines of the previous scene, the Merry Greek um, Solus, uh, he says that he's intending to laugh at the matter, uh, but fain would I speak with Custance, if I wist how, to laugh at the matter. Mm. I, think, I, think he, I think he thinks the whole thing is an enormous joke. Oh yeah, I, 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 he can't I read it as believe a for a second it's happening. No. Yeah. No, sorry, no. Simon. No, no, no. I think I was just saying the same thing. Sorry to interrupt. I was just saying that I, I read it instinctively as a, as a, as a kind of a, as a send up in it because of those lines um, uh, as well. But um, I don't really know what else would make sense. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, th I, th mm. I think, yeah, as, as far as Merry Greek's concerned, it's all Merry. It's just a lot. It's a, it's, it's a jape, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm. Helen. And the other thing that is so much against Royster Doyster is that, and this is not the first time this has come up, he intends that Christian Custons will make the proposal. If you've seen the Merry Greek thing, um, then he will have you if he may, uh, that, that he says that ye humbly beseech him, ye may his wife be. She has got to make the proposal. Mm. <laughs> um, and this is not the first time that's come up. Um, because he's so amazing, he's expecting women to go up to him and just propose. I mean, that's, that's, that's in his mind. That's what he's been sold. Yeah. He's living yeah. On, a, on, a, on a cushion of privilege, just floating yeah. along there. there we go. Definitely a legend in his own mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just... It's just the way he's did. Uh, uh, in yesterday's session, we had lots of these. But, but, oh my lord! You know the women. The women when they hear your name, they laugh for joy. Um, <laughs> yes, David Cameron, the early years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was actually thinking of a successor of his. Yeah. Um, okay. Any, <laughs> any additional obvious. thoughts before we we move on? Because uh, Royster's about to enter. Okay, so uh, Customs has just left. Mary Greek is left alone on stage. He does a little bit of speechify bridge action so that uh, Royster can enter a, a different time as Customs. Now that the whole answer in my device doth rest, I shall paint out our wooer in colours of the best, and all that I shall say be on Custance's mouth. She is author of all that I shall speak, forsooth. But yonder cometh Royster Doyster now in a trance. And indeed enter Royster Doyster. Juno, send me this day good luck and good chance. I cannot but come see how Merry Greek does speed. I will not see him, but give him a jut indeed. I cry your mastership mercy. And whither now? As, as fast as I could run, sir, in post against you. But why speak ye so faintly, or, or why are ye so sad? Thou knowest the proverb, because I cannot be had. Hast thou spoken with the woman? Yea, that I have. And what will this gear be? No, so God may save. Hast thou a flat answer? Nay, 
a sharp answer. What? Ye shall not, she says, by her will, marry her cat. Ye are such a calf, such an ass, such a block, such a lubin, such a hobo, such a lobcock, and because ye should come to her at no season, she despised your mashup out of all reason. Beware what I, what ye say, cry, of such a gentleman. Nay, but I fear him not, cause she do the best he can. He vaunteth himself for a man of prowess, great, whereas a good gander, I dare say, may him beat, and where he is louted and laughed to scorn for the various dolt that ever was born, and various lubber, sloven, and beast, living in this world from the west to the east. Yet of himself hath he such opinion that in all the world is not like min is not the like minion. He thinketh each woman to be brought in dotage with the only sight of his goodly personage, yet none that will have him. We do not him, we do him lout and flock, and make him among us our common sporting stock, and so would I now, Koshi, save only because better, nay, Koai, I lust not meddle with doors, ye are happy, Koai, that ye are a woman, this would cost you your life, in case you were a man. Yea, a hundred thousand pounds should not save her life. <laughs> no, but that ye woo her, to have her to your wife. But I could not stop her mouth. Hey oh, oh that's Be of good cheer, man, and let the world pass. What shall I do or say now that it will not be? Ye shall have choice of a thousand as good as she, and ye must pardon her. It is for lack of wit. Yea, for were not I an husband for her fit? Well, what should I do now? <laughs> Faith, I cannot tell. I'll go home and die. Then shall I bid toll the bell? No. God have mercy on your soul. Ah, good gentleman, that ere you should thus die for an unkind woman. Will you drink once, ere you go? No, no, I will none. How feels your soul to God? I am nigh gone. And shall we hence straight? Yeah. Placebo de Lexi. Master Royster Doyster, we'll straight go home and die. Our Lord Jesus Christ, his soul have mercy upon. Thus you see, today a man, tomorrow John. Yet, saving for a woman's extreme cruelty, he might have lived yet a month or two or three. But in spite of customs, which hath him wearied, his mass ship shall be worshipfully buried. And while some piece of his soul is yet him within, some part of his funeral let us here begin. Hey ho, alas, the pangs of death my heart do break. Hold your peace for shame, sir. A dead man may not, may not speak. Ne quando. What mourners and what tortures shall we have? None. Dirige. He will go darkling to his grave. Neke looks, neke crooks, neke mourners, neke click. He will steal to heaven, unknowing to God, I think. A porta in ferai. Who shall your goods possess? Thou shalt be my factor, and have all, more or less. Requiem eternum. Now, God reward your mastership, and I will cry, have paperny dole for your worship. Come forth, sirs, hear the doleful news I shall you tell. And into the servants, doughty in harpax. Our good master here will no longer with us dwell. Yet, sirs, as ye will the bliss of heaven win when he cometh to the grave, lay him softly in our divi vocab. All men take heed by this one gentleman. How you set your love upon an unkind woman, for these women be all such mad peevish elves, they will not be won except to please themselves. But in faith, customs, if ever ye come in hell, Master Royster Doyster shall serve you as well. And will ye needs go from us thus, in very deed? Yea, in good sadness. Thou, Jesus Christ, be your speed. Good night, Roger, old knave. Farewell, Roger, old knave. Good night, Roger, old knave, knave. Now, near quando, a divi vocum, requiem eternam. Pray for the lot for the late master Royster Doyster's soul.
And come forth, parish clerk, let the passing bell toll. Pray for your master, sirs, and for him ring a peal. He was your right good master while he wasn't healed. And enter the parish clerk, an appeal of bells rung by the parish clerk and Royster Doyster's men. I don't know precisely how the next dialogue functions, whether it's, a, it's actually potentially a song or not, but let's do it as dialogue. The first bell, a triple. When died he, when died he, the second. We have him, we have him. The third. Royster Doyster, Royster Doyster, the fourth bell, he cometh, he cometh, the great bell. Ah, oh, ah, oh. And exit Parish Clark and everybody else. Key Lazaram. Hey ho. Dead men go not so fast in Paradiso. Hey ho. Soft, hear what I have cast. I will hear nothing, I am past. Whoa, well away. You may tarry one hour and hear what I say. You are best, sir, for a while to revive again and quite them ere you go. Trust thou so? Yea, plain. How may I revive, being now so far past? I will rob your temples and fetch you again at last. It will not be possible. Yes, for twenty pound. Arms? What dost thou? Uh, fetch you again out of your sound. By this cross ye were nigh gone indeed. I might feel your soul departing within an inch of your heel. Now, follow my counsel. What is it? If I were you, Custance should eft seek to me ere I would bow. Well, as thou wilt have me, even so will I do. Then shall ye revive again for an hour or two. As thou wilt. I am content for a little space. Good hap is not hasty, yet in space cometh grace. To speak with Custis yourself should be very well. What good thereof may come, nor I nor you can tell. But now the matter standeth upon your marriage. You must now take unto you a lusty carriage. You may not speak with a faint heart to Custis, but with a lusty breast and countenance, that she may know she hath to answer to a man. Yes, I can do that as well as any can. Then, because you must cast this face to face woo, let us see how you how to behave yourself ye can do. Ye must have a portly brag after your estate. Tush, I can handle that after the best rate. Well done. So, lo, up man, with your head and chin. Up with that snout man. So, lo, now you begin. So, that is somewhat like but pranky code nay when <laughs> this is a lusty brute hands to your side man so lo now it is even as it should be that is somewhat like for a man of your degree then must you stately go jutting up and down jetting up and down can you no better shake the tail of your gown there lo such a lusty brag it is ye must make to come behind and make curtsy how must some pains take? Uh, elsewhere I much to blame. I, I thank your mastership. The Lord one day all to begrime you with worship. Back, Sir Sauce, let gentle folks have elbow room. Boyd, sirs, see ye not Master Royster Doyster come. Make place, my masters. Thou jostlest now too nigh. Back, all rude louts. Shh. I cry your mashup mercy. Hoi day, if fair fine Mistress Custon saw you now, Ralph Royster Doyster, were her own, I warrant you. Ne'er a master by your girdle? Your good mastership's mastership were her own mistress-ships, mistress-ships. You were take up for hawks, you were gone, you were gone, but now one other thing yet more, more yet I think upon. Show what it is. A wooer. Be he never so poor, must play and sing before his best beloved's door. How much more than you? Thou speakest well out of doubt, and perchance that would make us the soonest come out. Go call my musicians, bid them higher pace. I will be here with them, uh, you can see, Trey Ace. And uh, exit Merry Greek. 
but we're just going to pause there because the uh, the action continues. There's lots of things in that. Um, there's some physical uh, business again. So much physical business in there. Um, firstly, how does uh, how does Merry Greek rouse him? He clearly gives gives Royster Doister a, quote, a kiss in the choppers. Uh, with, with he gives a mighty slap um, uh, to rouse him. Uh, so there's sort of j the, the continuation of the physical attacks that we had uh, earlier. In fact, when he fir Royster first comes on, he says, uh, I'll give him a jut indeed. So he basically barges into him, pretending not to see him. So there's several bits like that. And then we have at the end, the whole teaching him to strut. I mean, there's a bit where basically the, the stage direction should really read um, at this point, uh, can you uh, wag your tail feather? Um, I mean, that's basically what he says at one point. Can you know, know better shake the tail of your gown? Um, so he's sort of teaching him, because uh, Royster's Oyster is really depressed. <laughs> Um, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it, there's a whole journey to this scene from, you know, mm. he comes in really sad. He has a mock funeral. Where the hell does that come from? <laughs> it's, it's very on the hoof for his thinking, I guess, by Mary Greek is how I, uh, I, I, I guess I, I, I felt it was, is that, you know, he says he's, he's going to die. So well, brilliant. Unless it's like a prepared jest that he, he knows the Royster Doyster is kind of, um, uh, it's kind of prone to, to these melancholy moods. I don't know, but it seemed like it was just on the hoof. Oh, he's sad. Well, let's play on that. Just one big like laugh after another. Well, I, yeah, I, I mean, it's, most of it does seem to be on the hoof, but where does he get the parish clerk from? I mean, do they do this every Passing day? Passing by. <laughs> is this the only way to get him out of bed in the morning? I mean, is, is, is Royster Doyster actually uh, you know, suffering from clinical depression? Because, you know, he's, it's, it's, uh, you know, we were thinking of him just this sort of idiot. Um, but he seems to have some severe, um, you know, mood swings uh, going on here. So uh, maybe Merry Greek isn't isn't a wholly malign influence on him. Maybe he's the only one who gets mm. him out of bed in the morning. I see lots of hands. <laughs> Alan first. Yeah, I think we did have it prefigured yesterday that um, Royster Doyster goes through this having intense crushes on any passing female, <laughs> um, and and basically then going through this whole. Oh, I've been rejected. I'm I'm going to die. Um, and he, he is very prone to overacting the whole bloody time. Um, and I I tried to get dejection into the voice there of how mm. successfully I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I think it, I think it worked very well. Um, you know, he was he was uh, it, it, it gave um, you know Merry Greek the motivation to really try and get mm. you g'd up, um, Sarah. I was going to say exactly what Alan said. We had that speech of Mary Greeks yesterday where he was like, oh, yeah, every every day he's in love with a different woman. Oh, and he can't live without her. And then he's going to die because she doesn't want him. And 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 so I can totally imagine that he's become like mates with the parish clerk and they've got <laughs> this set up between them. You know? Um yeah, I mean, that was prefigured yesterday. So I, I don't think we need to take it too seriously. It, um, it is delightfully silly and random. Yeah. I mean, it's just, the, and it's a whole enterprise of, of, um, of, of you know, the, there's a priest, there's bells, they're ringing <laughs> bells. <laughs> but are they? Um, I'm assuming they're just handbells. I don't think they're... Um, or else good. they're singing as bells. Mm. Well, I just... I saw that as a song actually that uh, that piece. We just say the peal, the peal of bells rung by the parish clerk. Yeah, but um, I, the 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 short lines there, which Simon read, I I think are actually sung. I, I'm surprised you hadn't called on Eric for that one. Actually. Well, I wanted I wanted it to stay um stay with Royster on that because I'm assuming what it is is you get the note. The first bell, a triple, yeah, when he died, yeah. when died he. So it could be sung, but I think it's in when combination he, with bells. When died he, we um, them, we them. Uh, uh, Lynn. Yeah, what I, what I love about the, uh, the, oh, I'm so brokenhearted, I'm dying sequence is that it doesn't just mock Royster Doyster, it's mocking the whole courtly love mm. tradition. Um, and, you know, something that in a couple of decades will manifest itself in sonnet sequences and so forth. You know, oh, you know, she rejects me. I can't live anymore. Um, 
and, and so it, it's not just it's not just mocking him individually, but that that whole trope of my love's rejecting me. I'm I'm going to die now because that's all already in the middle of the century, kind of overplayed and 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 send up a ball. Uh, I think is a, a phrase I've heard before when we, when we were talking about Spanish tragedy. Actually, it's like it's 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 it already like the the whole courtly love tradition um, is is mockable, and that's what that's doing here. And I think that's kind of great. Yes, it's a sense of the play is basically just saying, "Get over yourselves, um, <laughs> Helen." It's like, oh, you're gonna die? Well, we'll take that super literally. Let's let's have your estate settled and and have your services and like, let's literalize that metaphor and and demonstrate how absurd it is. Mm. Um, my problem is the date of the play. Um, if we could make this 53 rather than 52, I would be quite a bit happier. What we've got here is definitely Catholic. Pray for the late Master Royster Doyster's soul would be under no circumstances acceptable in the last year of Edward. Well, the 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 uh, argument is that it originates fifty two, but is rewritten fifty three onwards. So that there are right. there are additions or changes. There are so, making sure all the bits are in the right place is actually quite difficult because some of the 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 bits in the text were were weirdly placed. Because um, the um, the whole um, the 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 thing is that although it seems to us like just a pastiche of uh, funeral rites and stuff. Nevertheless, they were serious problems with this sort of thing if we put it back in its original day. We also ought to note that Mary Greek does a Lazarus. <laughs> Name checks Lazarus. Mm. Well, we can assume that Royster is, is so depressed he's lying on the floor. Oh, yes, 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 you know, yes. He's doing the full thing and then it's, you know, how do we, but, how do we awaken him? Slap. <laughs> Well, no, no, no. I, 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 I'm not sure. I mean, he said uh, he's doing a Lazarus come forth. He's raising the dead. Yes, but I think, as far as I can see, that all Royster's doing is sort of just he's, he's on the ground and they're going, uh, "Come, for Lazarus, come forth," or whatever the line is, and he just goes, "Hey ho," <laughs> and straight back <laughs> down enough. again. Yeah. Um, and it's just you know he tries rubbing his temples, and then you know I, I, I can get you up again. Uh, you know, for twenty pounds, I almost see the twenty pounds coming straight up in the air as well. And then, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've also got a T-shirt line: "Ye cool. shall not, by her will, marry her cat." <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a rejection for you. He doesn't yeah. sugarcoat it at all. It's his first line, isn't it? <laughs> this is, yeah. This is just how I did mean, it go? You won't even marry her cat, mate. <laughs> <laughs> she won't agree to marry you. She says you can't even marry a cat. <laughs> Shh, that's got to hurt. Alan. Yeah, I must admit that uh, I was hearing Mary Greeks, particularly towards the end of that, I was actually hearing it in a drill sergeant's voice. You know, stand up, stand straight, head back, chin up. Yeah, well, having got mm, him up, they've yeah, got to now I... teach him to have some self confidence, and and uh, and yeah, so it's that, it, it's it's that, but it's also swagger and and mm. and you know silly things, and it's just what can I make him do now? You know, wa waggle your ass, waggle your ass. Yeah, that's much better, much better. Yeah, well done, mate. Yeah, um, Sarah. He's also, I noticed, um, managed to get the musicians recalled. Is <laughs> mm. is he working for the union? <laughs> Any excuses like, oh yeah, you better get your, mus your musicians in to come and you know do a bit of singing and playing because well, well, Act Three yeah. is moving on a pace now. We've got to get a song in somewhere. Yeah, um, true. We, we haven't had a, we've had us maybe some song, but we haven't had a song yet. Song. Um, uh, so uh, Eric, uh, I, well, aside from the thing that uh, I was going to say, uh, I was going to say that um, uh, well, you know he did say that he's keeping his musicians close because they always take so, such a long time to come and go and do shit. And like, it, they take a day to gather. So, yeah. And also I was going to say that the, the whole funeral, a uh, fake funeral, um, reminded me of Rent, like the musical. <laughs> There's this scene where they, they do like this fake funeral uh, for La Vie Bohème, 
which is, you know, because, you know, this uh, big corporate person is trying to buy them out and they're like, oh, yeah, dear zero, dear zero, and so on. Um, and it's just this whole, like, mockery of what, you know, capitalism stands for. And then, you know, la people am the opposing view, basically, um, <laughs> which is kind of weird, but, yeah. Okay, uh, let us move on. Uh, the We're still in the scene, as it were. Uh, Merry Greek has gone off to fetch... Uh, the instrumentalists, because um, he's been uh, Royster's been persuaded that uh, a, a song uh, is is exactly what we need right now. So uh, Mary Greek has just exited. Dan. This was well said, of Mary Greek. I allow his wit. Before my sweetheart's door, we will have a fit. That if I love come forth, I may with her talk. I tell not that this gear shall on my side walk. And re-enter Mary Greek et al. But lo, oh, how well Merry Greek is returned since. There hath grown no grass on my heels since I went hence. Lo, here have I brought that shall make you pastance. Come, sirs, let us sing to where win my dear love customs. And here they sing. Okay, but we um, shall read. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> we, just, just, just you, Eric. You want to read. Uh, I mun be married a Sunday. I mun be married a Sunday. Whosoever shall come that way, I mun be married a Sunday. Robert Doyster is my name. Robert Doyster is my name. A lusty boot, I am the same. I mun be married a Sunday. Christian Constance uh, have I found. Christian Constance have I found. A widow worth a thousand pound. I must mun be married a Sunday. Constance is as sweet as honey. Constance is as sweet as honey. I her lamb and she my coney. I mun be married a Sunday. When we shall make our wedding feast, when we shall make our wedding feast, there shall be cheer for man and beast, and man be married a Sunday. Lo, where she cometh, some countenance to her make, and ye shall hear me be plain with her for your sake. I think I've just got to pause there just to go, what a song. You know, I think <laughs> Sorry, that's yeah. got to be a Ralph Royster Doyster original, hasn't it? Um, you know, he's definitely, definitely written, written that in his own time, because they're such totally. classic lyrics, aren't they? <laughs> oh, that's fabulous. Awful, cringeworthy. You, you could almost that... do it to the tune of I'm Getting Married in the Morning. Yeah, um, it, it, but it, though, I liked the sort of childish, re, uh, uh, not, uh, sort of, um, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the words. Um, you know, uh, nursery rhyme style quality mm. to it of something that's really quite rubbish, um, but beautifully done. Uh, there. <laughs> I just figured he's kind of like, you know, it's he, he's not he doesn't know what a ballad is. I'm, I'm assuming. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it could function perfectly well. I mean, the, 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 the repetition and the, the, the way it's structured, it, it could be done well, but I think it would be disappointing if it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay I, I don't want to linger on that that's uh just just yeah that was the thing uh so uh merry greek royster uh musicians uh who i don't think really say anything um are there enter customs to them what gouding and fooling is this afore my door May not folks be honest, pray you, though they be poor. <laughs> as that thing may be true, so rich folks may be fools. Her talk is as fine as she had learned in schools. Look partly toward her and draw a little near. Get ye home, idle folks. Why may not we be here? Nay, and ye will haze. Haze, otherwise I tell you plain, and ye will not haze, then give us our gear again. Indeed, I have of yours much gay things, God save us all. Speak gently unto her, and let her take all. Dad, you are too tender-hearted. Shall she make us doors? Nay, dame, I will be plain with you in my friend's cause. Let all this pass, sweetheart, and accept my service. I will not be served with a fool in no wise. When I choose an husband, I hope to take a man. And where will you find one which can do that he can? Now, this man toward you being so kind, why not make him an answer somewhat to his mind? I sent him a full answer by you, did I not? And I reported it. Nay, I must speak it again. No, no, he told it all. Was I not meetly plain? Yes. 
but I would not tell all for faith if I had. With you, Dame Custance, ere this hour it had been bad, and not without cause, for this goodly personage meant no less than to join with you in marriage. Let him waste no more labour nor suit about me. You know not where your preferment lieth, I see. He sendeth you such a token, ring and letter. Marry, here it is. You never saw a better. Let us see your letter. Hold, read it if you can, and see what letter it is to win a woman. <clears throat> to mine own dear coney, bird, sweetheart and Pigsney, good Mistress Custance, present these by and by. Of this superscription, do ye blame the style? With the rest, as good stuff as ye read a great while. Sorry, it's not terribly clear where he uh, stops reading and starts talking. Uh, <laughs> sweet Mistress, uh, where as I love you nothing at all, regarding your substance and riches, chief of all, for your personage, beauty, demeanour and wit, I commend me unto you never a whit. Uh, sorry to bear report of your good welfare, for, as I hear say, such your conditions are, that ye be worthy favour of no living man, to be aboard of every honest man. To be taken for a woman inclined to vice, nothing at all to virtue, giving her due price. Wherefore, concerning marriage, ye have thought such a fine paragon as ne'er honest man bought. And now, by these presents, I do you advertise that I am minded to marry you in no wise. For your goods and substance, I could be content to take you as ye are. If ye mind to be my wife, ye shall be assured. For the time of my life, I will keep ye right well. From good raiment and fair, ye shall not be kept but in sorrow and care. Ye shall in no wise live at your own liberty. Do and say what ye lust, ye shall never please me. But when ye are merry, I will be all sad. When ye are sorry, I will be very glad. When ye seek your heart's ease, I will be unkind. And no time in me shall ye much gentleness find. But all things contrary to your will and mind shall be done. Otherwise, I will not be behind to speak. And as for all them that would do you wrong, I will so help and maintain ye shall not live long, nor any foolish dog shall cumber you, but I, I, who e'er say nay, will stick by you till I die. Thus, good Mistress Custance, the Lord you save and keep from me, Royster Doyster, whether I wake or sleep, who favoureth you no less, ye may be bold than this letter purporteth, which ye have unfolded. How? By this letter of love, is it not fine? By the arms of Calais, it is none of mine. Aye, you are foul to blame. This is your own hand. Might not a woman be proud of such an husband? Oh, but he would in a letter show such despite. Oh, I would I had him here, the witch did it indict. Why, you made it yourself. Ye you told me by this light. Yea, I meant I wrote it mine own self yesternight. Oh, sir, I would not have sent you such a mock. Ye may so take it, but I meant it not so, by cock. Who can blame this woman to fume and fret and rage? Tut, tut, yourself now have marred your own marriage. Well, yet, Mistress Custance, if ye can this remit, this gentleman otherwise may your love requite. No. God be with you both, and seek me no more to me. And she exits. Oh, she's gone forever. I shall see her. I shall her no more see. What? Weep? Fie for shame and blubber? For manhood's sake. Never let your foe so much pleasure of you take. Rather play the man's part and do love refrain. If she despise you, e'en despise ye her again. I gossam for thy sake. I defy her indeed. Yea, and perchance that way ye shall much sooner speed, for one mad property these women have in fame. When ye will, they will not. Will not ye, then will they? Ah, foolish woman, 
Ah, uh, most unlucky Custance. Ah, uh, unfortunate woman. Ah, uh, peevish Custance. Art thou to thine harm so obstinately bent that thou canst not see where lieth thine high preferment? Canst thou not love this man which could love thee so well? Art thou so much thine own foe? Now thus the truth tell. Well, I lament. So do I. Wherefore? For this thing. Because she's gone. I mourn for another thing. What is it, Mary Greek? Wherefore thou dost grief take? That I am not a woman myself, for your sake. I would have you myself, and a straw for your to kill, and mock much of you, though it were against my will. I would not, I warrant you, fall in such a rage as so to refuse such a goodly parsonage. In faith, I heartily thank thee, Mary Greek. And I were a woman. Thou wouldst me to me see? Oh, for, though I say it, a goodly person ye be. No, no. Yes, a goodly man, as e'er I did see. No, I'm a poor homely man, as God made me. By the faith that I owe to God, sir, but ye be. Would I might, for your sake, spend a thousand pound land. I dare say thou wouldst have made you to thy husband. <laughs> Yea, and I were the fairest lady in the shire, and knew you as I knew, as I know you, and see you now here. <gasps> Well, I say no more. For mercies, with all my heart. But since that cannot be, will you play a wise part? How should I? Refrain from Custance a while now, and I warrant her soon right glad to seek to you. You shall see her anon, come on her knees, creeping, and pray you to be good to her, salt tears weeping. But what? And she comes not. Oh, if faith then, farewell she. Or else, if ye be wroth, ye may avenged be. I cock's precious potstick, and e'en so I shall. I'll utterly destroy her, and house, and all. But I would be avenged in the mean space, on that vile scribbler that did my wooing disgrace. <laughs> scribbler, co you. Indeed, he is worthy, no less. I will call him to you, and ye bid me doubtless. Yes, although he has had as many lives as a thousand widows, a thousand wives, as a thousand lions and a thousand rats, a thousand wolves and a thousand cats, a thousand bulls and a thousand calves, and a thousand legions divided in halves. He shall never escape death on my sword's point, for I shall be torn therefore joint by joint. Nay, if you will kill him, I will not fet him, I will not in so much extremity set him. He may yet amend, sir, and be an honest man, therefore pardon him, good soul, as much as you can. Well, for thy sake, this once with his life he shall pass. And I will hew him all to pieces by the mass. Nay, faith, you shall promise that he shall no harm have, else I will not fed him. I shall, so God me save, that I may chide him a good. Yea, that do hardly. Go then. <laughs> I return and bring him to you by and by. And exit Merry Greek, and uh, who's once again manoeuvring the uh, the the general uh, emotions of Ralph Royster Doyster, going from <laughs> and then jig him up <laughs> so that he gets back into uh, into fighting mode. Um, a thousand wolves and a thousand cats, a thousand lions and a thousand rats. That seems awfully familiar to me. I don't know which other play, probably by Nicholas Udall, we've had that from. But that <laughs> that seems awfully familiar. Um, I, Simon might remember, uh, because he was in Jack Juggler um, mm. for the audio version, uh, which is the same author. And very similar dynamic between these two people, though uh, you were playing the other way around in that. You were mm. playing the victim, not the, uh, the, 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 the victim. I am still recovering. Yeah, um, I don't know what it is. I, I, I thought I'd be, let you be the the, the the aggressor this time. Normally, it's the other way around. Um, you know, That's true. It's usually you picking on me. In let's Edinburgh, be honest. I, I punched Simon <laughs> three or four times in the course of a show. Um, so, um, though he did stab me once. No, I did stab you first. So, yeah. yeah, it's all right. We, we, we. Sorry, digress. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. <laughs> um, so yeah. So can Ralph Royster Doyster read? Probably not, because mm. he's he's outsourced his letter to a scribe, and that's what he's ascribing to it going horribly, horribly wrong. 
I actually, I, I had a question about that. I wondered that that that, that letter that we refer to at the end with the scribe, but the, the letter that, that Mary Greek read, do, I wasn't sure to be honest as I was doing it. But is that Mary Greek making it up on the spot as if it's a real letter, or is that a previous one that it, has it read been written by Custance? She's it has, it's, yeah. So no, right. it's it's, it's uh, there. Um, but lots of thoughts in the room, Helen. It's one of those trick letters. It only occurred to me when we were halfway through. Um, it's. In fact, if you don't end stop the lines, the meaning changes totally. Yeah. Whereas I love you nothing at all regarding your substance and riches, chiefly of all for your personage, beauty, demeanor, and wit. Mm. I commend me unto you, never a whit sorry to bear report of your good welfare. I mean, the whole, the letter is fine. It's the lines that are... Yeah, so it's the scribe has uh, has as uh, so it's, it, maybe he said it fine but the scribe ad uh, lineated it in a way that makes it i uh, see makes it uh worse i mean it, it's a very Ever. very complex game mm. how he would get that across on the stage i don't know because there are others that i remember in other early modern plays and it's always very difficult to, to for the audience to work out because you either have to read it one way or the other. You can't read it in between. Mm. Uh, the thing is, Mary Greek is not going to be giving it the benefit of the doubt. Of, oh, no, all. no, but... Exactly right. so, so in a sense, it is both, actually, isn't it? It's, it's, it's both the letter can is wrong, in a sense, and also Mary Greek is reading it wrong. Um, right. right. If that makes right. sense. Um, actually, if you want another example of this, um, Google Dear John punctuation exercise. I do this with my students. Um, I, I, I got this from the internet. I, uh, I give them an unpunctuated letter and say, punctuate this. And most of them punctuate it one way, but if you put the stops in different places, you get a breakup letter. And if you put them in, in the places where the students usually put them, you get a love letter. So it starts, Dear John, I want a man who knows what love is all about. You are generous, kind, and thoughtful. Um, uh, or you can punctuate, uh, dear John, I want a man who knows what love is. All about you are generous, kind, and thoughtful. And it goes on to say, and you're not generous, kind, and thoughtful. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it, yeah, so there's actually, a mo someone came up with a modern example of this where you put the, the, the full stops in different places, you get completely different meaning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and but it's, uh, yeah, sorry, Helen. But I don't, you, I mean, the, the point of it will get totally lost in the play. I don't it, know that it would. I, I was getting, I, 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 I think there's, there's ways to make that work. I, 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 I doesn't. It's, it's really, it is really hard though, and it's really long. Well, I was a third of the way down before I spotted it, and I had the text in front of me, and I'm not unintelligent. Hmm. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know that it matters. <laughs> Uh, I, I think it, it kind of helps to just sort of run it all together without very many pauses. But, um, yeah. Right, sorry. Um, uh, Eric? Well, since we're talking about punctuation and like how it can have double meanings and so on, um, well, Greek prophecies, like ancient Greek prophecies have the same problem where like it could mean, you know, you, if you do this, you're going to go to war. But if you don't, you're still going to go to war or, you know, you're going to die and so on. Uh, you kind of like... <laughs> Yeah, punctuation is strange. Mm. But, uh, I, I, again, I mean, it's uh, it's the way that uh, you know he goes for the uh, the the scribe, and he, you know, voice to voice has collapsed, and once again, Merry Greek's got to get him back up again. Um, you know, and, and that's the fun that Merry Greek obviously Merry Greek obviously enjoys this game a lot, and it you know it's all in the playing. Um, and as uh, Sarah pointed out in the chat, uh, the, the, and I'm sure we've got this somewhere else as well, it feels awfully familiar uh, by Cox Precious Potstick. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a classic, it's a classic. Alan, I saw a hand. Yeah, no, I, I was just thinking on the Greek Oracle one, you know, if you go to war, you will destroy a great empire. Mm. But who's, which one? Ooh. Um, 
You would have thought they'd played the Oracle game before by that point. Mm. Um, uh, any other thoughts about this scene? Uh, any, any, uh, anything else uh, anyone wants to leap in on? Um, uh, Customs see, obviously is not impressed. Yeah, Eric. I, I was just going to say that um, originally when Simon was reading the letter, I thought that maybe, and like the interaction that followed, I had, uh, m before the scribbler or scrivener part, I, I thought that perhaps um, um, Mary Greek had arranged to switch somehow. Like, mm. um, but I, I don't know, maybe that was just me getting too excited about like the switching letters. <laughs> Yeah, it it seemed that yeah. it was it was it's a misinterpretation thing, but I thought that well, similarly at the time. Uh, I, uh, I, yeah, Simon. No, it's just because there was that one line before where where the aside was like, "Have you got the letter?" And it, I can't remember it being very clear that Ralph actually did give him a letter. So that's why I thought it was almost it could have been like a, um, "Oh, here it is, dear Custance," <laughs> and then almost like making up on the hoof. But uh, but obviously, it's probably too well constructed for something as simple as that. Yeah, no, it, it it comes via via custody. Mm. It's that question: Did you send the letter? It's 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 all mm. to do with back plot and what happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Alan, I I think actually, had I read ahead, which I didn't, um, my character would have been sort of huffing and puffing all the way through that, you know, along the lines of that's mm. not what I said. Um, but we did have the question. I think Sarah raised it yesterday. I do hope uh, we read the letter. And lo and behold, Sarah, the letter was read. You're muted at the moment, so uh... it, it was Helen. Oh, was it Helen? Yeah, I think. Oh. Yes, but then I thought um, Royster Doster had written it. Yeah, but well, he did write it, but it he dictated copied. it. Yeah. Oh, he, he dictated, dictated it. it. The, ah. the, the problems of dictation. Yeah. So yes. it's, it's that's why he's that's why he's railing against the scrivener, uh, or the scribbler, as he's calling it, um, and that's why he wants to uh, uh, destroy him thousands <laughs> of times over, because he copied it out wrong. Oh. That's why I was asking, can he read? Um, I, I imagine he can read. Writing was a different skill, mm. and they were taught quite separately, reading and writing then. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts? Any other thoughts? Because we're yeah, about I... to we're going to meet the Scrivener any moment now. Um, uh, it's been a very unbalanced yeah. session, I have to say. A, a lot of reading has been by uh, one uh, one section of the group. Hopefully, it's going to balance out in this final portion. So, Act Three, Scene Five. Royster Doister is still on stage. Uh, Mary Greek's just literally exited. Royster has the floor. What is a gentleman but his word and his promise? I must now save this villain's life in any wise. And yet at him already my hands do tickle. I shall us hold them. They will be so fickle. Enter the Scrivener and Merry Greek to one side. Lo, the Merry Greek hath not brought him hence. Nay, I would I had of my purse paid forty pence. So would I too, but it needed not that stand. But... The gentleman had rather spent £5,000, for it disgraced him at least five times as much. He disgraced himself, his lavishness is such. How long they stand praising? Why, comest thou not away? Come now to himself, and hark what he will say. I am not afraid of his presence to appear. Art thou come, fellow? How think you? Am I not here? What hindrance hast thou done me, and what villainy? It hath come of thyself, if thou hast there had any. All the stock thou comest of, later or rather, from my first father's grandfather's father's father, all that should come of thee to the world's end, through to threescore generations they descend, can be able to make a just recompense for this trespass of thine, and this one offence. Wherein? Did you not make me a letter, brother? Pay you like hire, I will make you such another. Nay, see, these horse and Pharisees and scribes do not get their living by polling and bribes, but were not for shame. Yea, hold thy hand still. 
Why did ye promise that ye would not him spill? Why, wilt thou strike me again? You shall have as good as you bring me, bring me. that's plain. I cannot blame him, sir, that your blows would give him grief, for he knoweth present death to ensue of all ye give. Well, this man for once hath purchased thy pardon. And what say ye to me, or else I will be gone? I say, the letter thou madest me was not good. And did ye wrong copy it, supply it? Yes, out of thy copy, word for word, I it wrote. Then was it you, great habit, I wot, but in reading and pointing there was made some fault. I wot not, but it made all my matter to halt. How say you, is this man a reading or no? The self same that I wrote out of, so mote I go. Look, you on the hoot on your own fist, and I will look on this. And let this man be judged, whether I read or miss. To mine own dear colony, birds, sweetheart, and pigs, good mistress customs, present these by and by. How now doth not this superscription agree? Read that that is within, and there ye shall see the, the false sea. Sweet mistress, whereas I love you, nothing at all, regarding your riches and substance, chief of all for your personage, beauty, demeanour, and wit, I commend me unto you, never a wit. Sorry to hear a report of your good welfare, for, as I will say, your substance is your judicial power, that ye be worthy favour of no living man to be abhorred, of every honest man to be taken for an inclined to vice, nothing at all, to virtue giving a due price. Wherefore, concerning marriage, ye are thought such a fine paragon as a mere honest man bought. And now by these presents I do you advertise. And now by these presents I do you advertise that I am minded to marry you in no wise, for your goods and substance. I can be content to take you as ye are, if ye be only my wife. Ye shall be assured for the times of my life. I will keep you right, well, from good raiment and fair. You shall not be kept as in sorrow and care. You shall no more wise live at your own liberty. Do and say what you lust, and you shall never please me. But when you are merry, I will be all sad. When you are sorry, I will be very glad. When you seek your heart's ease, I will be unkind. At no time in yours shall you not show some find. But all things contrary to your will and mind shall be done otherwise. I will not be behind to speak, and as for all that all they that will do you wrong, I will so help maintain you shall not live long. Nor any foolish spell shall come to you, but I, I who I may say, say nay, will speak by you to all till I die. And thus, good mistress customs, the Lord you say will keep. From me most to Bristol, whether I wake or sleep. Who favoureth ye no less, ye may be bold, than this letter for brought it, which ye have unfold. Now, sir, what default can ye find in this letter? Of truth in my mind, there cannot be a better. Then was the fault in reading and not in writing. No, nor, I dare say, in the form of inviting. But who read this letter that it sounded so naught? I read it, indeed. <clears throat> it worked as he ought. Why, thou wretched villain, is all this same fault in thee? I knock your costard if ye offer to strike me. Strikes thou indeed, I offer but in jest. Yea, and rap ye again, except ye can sit and rest, and I will no longer tarry here, me believe. What? Wilt thou be angry, and I do thee forgive? Fare thou art, scribbler, I cry thee mercy indeed. Fare you well, Bibbler, and rightly may his food. If it were another than thou, it were a knave. Ye are another yourself, sir, the Lord us both safe. Albeit in this matter, 
I must your pardon crave. Alas, would ye wish in me the wit that ye have? <laughs> but as for my fault, I, I can quickly amend. I will show Custance it was I that did offend. By doing, by so doing, her anger may be reformed. But if by no entreaty she will be turned, then set light by her and be as testy as she, and do your force upon her with extremity. Come on, therefore, let us go home in sadness. That if force shall need, all may be in readiness, and as for this letter, hardly let all go. We will know where she refuse you for that or no. And they exit. So, uh, yes, the question of whether people will get the joke, it's, uh, it is Answered. repeated later. Um, uh, and the, the injunction for the Scrivener will be to follow the punctuation rather than the verse line. Um, I think it doesn't need to be done slowly. I think both of the speech don't need to necessarily be done slowly. I think that's always the thing of trying to get across the, the joke um, can kill the joke. I mean, it's not a short speech by any stretch of the imagination, but that's what blue pencil's for. Um, we can make it as short or as long as the performer can get a gag out of it. And who knows how many gags we could get um, a, 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 along those lines. Um, uh, so yes, uh, it might be a case, Alan just put in the chat, um, suggestion that uh, we could, um, uh, the, the actor themselves could always reform the lines based on punctuation rather than in verse form, and it might be easier for them to, uh, to get that gag um, that way. Thoughts, Simon? Yeah, well, I would say the first time it was read, obviously, by Mary Greig, having seen it back now, um, yeah, you'd probably have to stop your rhythm because quite a lot of it is very funny when it's taken out of context like that. Mm. Um, and you're right, obviously, the, the kind of instinctual thing was to kind of try and almost hesitate, like, this doesn't make sense. But you're right, if you just read it straight, um, I suppose the natural rhythms would probably end up going a little bit because I think that there would be a lot of chuckles when, <laughs> when you're literally reading an insult to somebody right in front of their face. And then the second time around, of course, it's just, it's a lovely piece of writing. Mm. It, it, it's, it's really one that just, it does require more rehearsal than it looks on the mm, page. Definitely. It's just a speech you do, you've got to figure out where we go for a laugh or where we yeah. let it ride and, 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 and the flow of it and uh, what else is happening on stage as well. I think uh, someone mentioned that earlier. Um, about, we, uh, we, was it Alan talking about what's Ralph Forrester Doyster doing while the letter's being read out the first mm. time? Well, there's, there's, there's definitely physical punctuation in the first time as well, because uh, a lot of those, those pauses, those endings, those kind of rhymes and stuff will probably be broken up with certain things, but there's definitely ways one could do it. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe save that for the end, but um, no, very interesting. Mm. Uh, any other thoughts on this before we leap into Act 4? Um, Just uh, that it, it, it is long, but the edit is going to be tricky because of all the enjambments, and you want to keep the rhyme because that's the form that the whole play is in. So it, 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 it um, yeah, it's, it, it's gonna be some work to, to cut it down in order to preserve the rhyme in the verse form because all the lines are in jam. So where do you stop it? But it's, it's a proviso for editors. It's gonna be a, a tricky one. Mm -hmm. uh, other thoughts? So we've uh, we've we've successfully navigated the middle of the play. Uh, we've uh, uh, Ralph Rooster Doyster has died, come back, um, sung a song, um, had his love uh, rejected, and then uh, hope restored. Lots more hitting occurred during that scene as well. Uh, there's a lot of indications of rough and tumble at various points. So uh, and the sense that merry Greek shine is perhaps being a bit tarnished, a little bit tarnished on his reputation so far. So um, maybe maybe that's going somewhere. But we're uh, we're leaping into Act 4, Scene 1, where we're going to meet Sim Shoresby. Have we met Sim Shoresby before? No. I don't think we have. So let's be introduce us to Sim Shoresby. Sure. Is there any man but I, Sim Shoresby alone, that would have taken such an enterprise upon him? In such an outrageous tempest as this was, such a dangerous gulf of the sea to pass, I think verily Neptune's mighty godship was angry with some that was in our ship. 
and but for the honesty which in me he found, I think for the other's sake we had been drowned. But fie on that servant which for his master's wealth will stick out for to hazard both his life and his health. My master, Gowin Godluck, after me a day, because of the weather, thought best his ship to stay. And now that I have the rough surges so well past, God grant I may find all things safe here at last. Then will I think all my travel well spent. Now, the first point whereof my master hath me sent is to salute Dame Christian Customs, his wife espoused, whom he tendereth no less than his life. I must see how is it is with her, well or wrong, and whether for him she doth not now think long. Then to other friends I have a message or tway, and then so to return and meet him on the way. Now I will go knock, that I may dispatch with speed. But lo, forth cometh herself, happily indeed. And indeed here enters Christian Custance. I come to see if any more stirring be here, but what stranger is this, which doth to me appear? Shoresby, I will speak to her. Dame, the Lord you save and see. What, friend Shim, Sim Shoresby? Forsooth, right welcome ye be. How doth mine own Garwin good luck, I pray thee tell? Sure. When he knoweth of your health, he will be perfect well. If he have perfect health, I am as I would be. Such news will please him well. This is as it should be. I think now long for him. And he as long for you. When will he be at home? His heart is here e'en now. His body cometh after. I would see that fain. As fast as wind and sail can carry it amain. But what two men are yond coming hitherwards? Now I shrew their best Christmas cheeks both togetherward. And enter various additional, additional people. Ralph Royster, Matthew Mary Greek, Truepenny, at some point are entering during this scene. Oh, what mean these lewd fellows thus to trouble me still? Shores be here, perchance, shall thereof deem some ill, and shall suspect me in some point of naughtiness. And they come hitherward. What's their business? I have naught to them, nor they to me, in sadness. Let us hearken, then. Somewhat there is, I fear it. Speak out loud best, that she may hear it. Nay, alas, ye may so fear her out of her wit. By the cross of my sword, I will turn her no whit. Will ye do no harm indeed? Shall I trust your word? By Royster Doister's faith, I will speak but in board. Let us hearken them. Somewhat there is, I fear it. I will speak out aloud. I care not who hear it. Sirs, see that my harness, my target and my shield be made as bright now as when I was last in field, as white as I should to war again tomorrow, for sick shall I be, that I work some folk's sorrow. Therefore, see that all shine as bright as St. George, or doth as a key, newly come from the smith's forge. I would have my sword and harness to shine so bright, that I might therewith dim mine enemy's sight. I would it have it cast beams as fast, I tell you plain, as doth the glittering grass after a shower of rain. And see that in case I should need to come to arming, all things may be ready as a minute's warning. Such a chance may chance in an hour. Do you hear? As perchance shall not chance again in seven year. Now, draw ye near to her and hear what shall be said. But I would not have you make her too much afraid. Well found, sweet wife, I trust. For all this your sour look. Wife? Why call ye me wife? Wife? This gear girth a crook? Nay, Mistress Custance, I warrant you our letter is not as we read e'en now, but much better. 
and where ye half stomach this gentleman of four, for this same letter ye will love him now, therefore. Nor it is not this letter, though ye were a queen, that should break marriage between you twain, I ween. I did not refuse him for the letter's sake. Then you are content to me for your husband to take? You for my husband to take? Nothing less, truly. Yea, say so, sweet spouse, a four strangers hardily. And though I have here his letter of love with me, yet his rings and tokens he sent keep safe with you. Oh, a mischief take his tokens and him and thee too. But what prate I with fools? Have I naught else to do? Come in with me, Sim Shoresby, to take some repast. I must ere I drink, by your leave, go in all haste, to a place or two with earnest letters of his. Then come drink here with me. I thank you. Do not miss. You shall have a token to your master with you. No tokens this time, Gramercy. God be with you. And he exits. Surely this fellow misdeemeth some ill in me. Which thing but God help will go near to spill me. Yea, farewell, fellow, and tell thy master good luck, that he cometh too late of his blossom to pluck. Let him keep him there still, or at least wise make no haste. As for his labour hither, he shall spend it in waste. His betters be in place now. As long as it will hold. Oh, I will be even with thee, thou beast. Thou mayst be bold. Will ye have us then? I will never have thee. I will have you. No, the devil shall have thee. I have gotten this hour more shame and harm by thee than all thy life days thou canst do me honesty. Why, now you may see what it cometh to in the end to make a deadly foe of your most loving friend. And it was this letter, if you would hear it now. I will hear none of it. In faith, it would ravish you. He hath stained my name forever, this is clear. I can make all as well in an hour. As ten year. How say ye? Will ye have him? No. Will ye take him? I defy him. At my word. I shame take him. Waste no more wind, for it will never be. This one fault with twain shall be mended, you shall see. Gentle Mistress Custance now, good Mistress Custance. Honey, Mistress Custance now, sweet Mistress Custance. Golden Mistress Custance now, white Mistress Custance. Silken Mistress Custance now, fair Mistress Custance. Faith, rather than to marry with such a doltish lout, I would match myself with a beggar out of doubt. Then I can say no more. To speed. We are not like except you wrap out a rag of your rhetoric. Speak not of winning me, for it shall <laughs> never be so. Yes, dame, I will have you, whether ye will or no. I command you to love me. Wherefore should ye not? Is not my love to you chafing and burning hot? To her, that is well said. Shall I so break my brain to dote upon you? And ye not love us again? Well said yet. Go to, thou goose. I say, Kit Custance, in case ye will not haze. Well, better yet, perchance. Oh, avaunt, Lothal, pick thee hence. Well, sir, ye perceive for all your kind offer, she will not you receive. Then a straw for her, and a straw for her again. She shall not be my wife, were she never so fain. No, and though she would at ten thousand pound cost. Lo, dame, you may see what an husband you have lost. No, yea, no force. A jewel much better lost than found. Ah, you will not believe how this doth my heart wound. How should a marriage between you be toward if both parties draw back and become so forward? Nay, dame, I will fire thee out of thy house, though I die destroy thee and all thine and that by and by nay for the passion of god sir do not so yes except she will say yea to that she said no oh and what be there no officers trow we in town to check idle loiterers bragging up and down where be they by whom vagabonds should be repressed 
that poor silly widows might live in peace and rest. Shall I never rid thee out of my company? I will call for help. What ho! Come forth, true penny. What is your will, mistress? Did you call me? Yea, go run apace, and, as fast as may be, pray Tristram Trusty, my most assured friend, to be here by and by, that he may me defend. That message so quickly shall be done by God's grace that at my return you shall say I went apace. And he exits. Then shall we see, I trow, whether ye shall do me harm. Yea, in faith, Kit, I shall thee and thine so charm that all woman incarnate of thee may beware. Nay, as for charming me, come hither if thou dare. I shall clout thee till thou stink, both thee and thy train, and coil me mine own hands, and send thee home again. Yea, sayest thou me that, dame? Dost thou me threaten? Go we, I will see whether I shall be beaten. Nay, for the pace of God, let me now treat peace, for bloodshed will there be, in case this strife increase. Ah, good Dame Custance, take better away with you. Let him do his worst. Yield in time. Come hence, thou. And exit Royster and Merry Greek, and we'll pause there. Uh, the, I, I think Royster Doyster was about to get his ass handed to him, but... Um, <laughs> Um, all sorts of um, things going on there. Uh, it's uh, it's was it third time lucky, fourth time lucky for for Ro Ralph. He's 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 just not getting it, is he? He's just not the message is not getting through. Um, mm. She's just not into you, mate. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, but yeah, Shoresby. Shoresby's not sure what's going on. Shoresby's going off to his master to tell, uh, to, to tell, tell the affianced, saying, what's going on? Saying, what's going on? I see, I see trouble ahead tomorrow. I definitely see it, trouble ahead tomorrow. Uh, any thoughts about Shoresby? I apologise for extraneous shores that were added. That is my, my bad on the formatting. Uh, uh, Simon. I got a distinct Jeffrey Palmer vibe from uh Shoresby, but mostly for that <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean it was mostly that line something about longing for you for he is long for you and it just felt like one of those winky lines <laughs> quite literally <laughs> uh Lynn yeah, there's another thing going on the scene that I'm currently really interested in um I mean it's it, it's uh, looking at it through a modern lens is that the the whole you know courtly love tradition the man is your servant and he's dying for you and 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 all of that you know it's originally kind of meant to put the woman in a position of some agency and some power but it also creates a situation where the woman can't say no and meet and have it stick there's no way you know she can't make her no mean anything because the no just fans the flames so so i mean i don't think that's what the author meant to demonstrate going here but i think this acts that out that that one of the one of the discomforts of this tradition is that you can't just say i'm not that into you sorry because no never actually means no i'm not so sure that the text isn't actually playing on that um mm -hmm. it's it's it, it definitely um it, it's definitely playing with the 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 uselessness of royster in 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 all of or you know shall we say feckless men in so many ways because you know it's you know he's coming in and saying oh we've got the new letter you know the let read the letter properly and she, i don't care about the letter um that was the letter was never the issue and then when she rejects him again he's going oh i didn't really want that you know um <laughs> you know on it you know maybe she'll chase me now no that didn't work um there's just so many so many iterations of general uselessness there um mm. helen i'm getting strong plautus mm. feel here um it's to an extent i keep on seeing merry geek as as the slave 
the wise and sensible and mature slave and the and um Royster Doister as the incredibly stupid master. Mm. Um, it's up Pompeii. It, I, I think it's, it's, it's definitely produced by someone who's read lots of classics and is teaching classics on, 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 on you know, that's yeah. sort of his job. So I think the influence of Terence and Plautus is very, very, very plausible. Um, it's really mixed though with that, that much more aggressive English tradition of the, of the, of the vice mixed in with Mary Green. Oh yes, yes. Uh, mm. I mean, there's something really quite, you know, he's determined to just mock and make fun. He's, you know, whereas a lot of the servants in, are trying to further their master's aims with some, you know, intent, uh, even if they're trying to semi-stage manage things. He's, he has no interest in anyone getting anything they want. He just mm. wants to have a laugh. Um, mm. He's a, he's a dangerous chap. Is Mary Greek. But yeah, I think there's a, there's a lot of classical influences in this. I would, I would not be surprised if we could identify more specific ones if we so wished. Alan. Yeah, I mean, th that gives another possible interpretation for Mary Creek is doing his Lurkio, channeling in a Frankie Howard. Mm. Yeah, except as Robert's just said, he isn't. I mean, he's different. He, he is a vice character, mm. whereas Lurkio was just desperate to avoid getting into trouble mm. and say his prologue. Yeah, the, the 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 desperate not to get in trouble is actually almost all the all the servant characters in this. You know, they're mm. they're constantly mm. worried about ending up upsetting their mistress or master, um, even if they are critical of their master. I mean, there was that um, Doughty's servant speech yesterday, where he basically comes in and just going, "My master, oh God, what am I going to do with this yeah. this man? Oh God, we keep we were up all night playing this rumty tumty tumty thing. I mean." Um, and now I'm tired, my feet hurt. Where's the house? I can't find the house. Where's Google Maps when you need it? Um, <laughs> oh, here it is. It's right next to me for the whole speech. Um, <coughs> uh, other thoughts? Sarah. This is more of a general thought about the whole play. Uh, kind of tied to this scene, but I don't know if we're moving in oh, oh is that it how have we finished now for the well we we, we are finished uh, we've done all the scenes of this session yes um okay. so we are uh, we are uh in in into oh, well, uh, technically we're approaching extra time we so yes we can open it out to to the play in general okay because what i really wanted to say was i am i said it kind of a bit yesterday but even more today i am loving the female characters in this um I mean, Mumblecrust yesterday was just a joy and we didn't have much of, of um, Tib today, but she's absolutely hilarious. But then I also really love what he's done with Custance because, she, you know, we, where we started today, um, it felt like a bit of a, oh yeah, hangover from, hangover scene from yesterday. But she's so, um, she's so correct. And she's so sort of, oh, you know, you, you silly girls, you naughty girls, and telling them how to behave and, and sort of putting them in their place. Um, and then just because she's faced with, with, these, with this absolute idiot who won't take no for an answer, she just basically unravels <laughs> to the point where by that last scene, end of that last scene that we've just done, she's, she's literally like, physically threatening him she's she's had enough and she's like I am just going to never mind anyone else saving me I am just going to I am just going to have you and I just love that I love that journey that she goes uh through in a relatively short number of scenes um where she starts off as this sort of you know ideal um matron widow um very correct and sedate figure and then just by the end of this section is is all over the place and and I, I don't I don't I'm sure it does happen in other plays of this era, but I don't remember it happening so strongly in the ones that I've been part of, at least. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's um, we we've certainly got um, um, yeah, I, I think you're right about the journey. Uh, yeah. We've definitely got uh, people who go in for um, uh, the the violence. Um, you know, but, uh, as we've with Gamma Gurdon and um, uh, we've got uh, we've got a, a, a severe bit of uh, uh, attacking. Uh, okay. <laughs> that. Um, 
Well, that might be more uh, classified as what we used to call a cat fight uh, than, uh, than ah, something that right. we considered empowering. Um, still quite fun though, um, as a scene. But here, I mean, it's no, it's not really a spoiler to say that in in literally four lines time, you get reinforcements. Oh, okay, right. So Custance yeah. <laughs> Custance calls on uh, 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 her household to uh, to unite. So and and there is business. Uh, I don't know how extensive that is because I, I I don't know. But um, yeah, you 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 will be calling forth the powers of uh, uh, Ali Face Tibbet Talk Base and and Mumble Crust Mumble Crust returns. Yay! Uh, uh, do, do we Ben? This Tristram Trusty has been sent for, who is a neighbour. Mm. So yeah, uh, a they're, friend. They're, 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 but they're, they're but I mean, she she says, "I shall clout thee till thou stink." Mm. Yeah, and and she's um she's moved there from you, the formal you. Yeah. To thou, mm. I, I'm just just having a quick look at her. She um, has lost it big time, and I love that. Like that's such a—it's just such oh, a big no, dramatic she, arc. She's been using thou before, uh, but she's yeah, um, but probably uh, not at the beginning. Yeah, and they've been using uh, beating, beating till um, uh, till you stink is uh, again a, a, a term from around this time. There's quite a lot of people being beaten till they st they stink, possibly because they're all written by this person, um, <laughs> depending who you ask. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or it's just a turn of phrase. Or, or it um, may have been his hobby when he was editing. Mm. Uh, uh, so uh, yes, we're uh, we've we've lost a couple of people in the uh, in in the ensuing uh, last moment. So we're going to go around the room who survive here and are still here. <laughs> Alan, final thoughts. Yeah, I mean it's moving at a good pace, um, and the the verbal humour I think is I'm now more tuned into it than I was yesterday. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, you weren't here yesterday, so I, I, I do. I, I'm afraid that you've been sort of thrown into the midst of this melee of stuff. And um, uh, how, how's it been for you? It has been a melee. Yeah, that's a really good way of describing it. I don't think Constance, um, or Chris Constance, is likable. She's supposed to be like the main love interest in the narrative. I just don't find her likable. Another thing I noticed was that the letters were really backhanded. But there was a lot of negativity in the, le the love letters. Hmm. Mm. Um, She's so, yeah. got a problem, has Custance, though. Um, I mean, it's all very well for men, but for women in this period, especially the, the, the widows who were, who were generally thought of as having got a taste for having a man and now were deprived and therefore were on the, on, on the prowl, um, preserving the appearance of your virtue was extraordinarily important. Um, and she's, she's, she's had a lot to put up with. <laughs> one way and another. Is it a romance? A, is it a romance? I don't think it is. No. I think um, it's a comedy. A I, farce I even. The, the problem is there is a romance, but it's with someone who we haven't met yet. Um, so <laughs> yeah. Custance is, um, is being wooed by someone horrible. She's already got a fiancé and we haven't met him yet. So, you know, there is a love story, but it's currently off stage. He hasn't arrived yet. His messenger's arrived, but that's all we've had. Uh, Sarah. Yeah, just going back to Custance's journey, actually, um, that was another really nice touch, I thought, on the part of the playwright, because, yes, OK, Sim Shawsby comes in and clearly that's so that he can witness Royster, Doyster and Mary Greek doing their stuff and then report back and that's going to cause all kinds of, of romantic chaos um, that will need sorting out. But also, it also gave um, Custance the opportunity to have a little... Um, back and forth with someone who she does actually like. And so we got to see just momentarily like a different side of a character. You know, she starts off, she's scolding the maids and she's being very correct um, and virtuous and sedate. And then by the end of this section, she's completely unraveled and she's threatening violence. But we did have in between that moment where she, she just comes across as just being very 
um, you know, genuinely in love. And I thought that was quite a nice sort of detail to add into her character as well. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, it's, um, it's, it's going to be interesting tomorrow, uh, sustaining the momentum in a sense of where the narrative has been, because, you know, we are going from this big verbal into uh, uh, a bit of a crowd scene. That's how we sort of starting next time. So I'm hoping we can keep a sense of momentum. Um, mm. Helen, final thoughts? Oh, I think I've, I think I've done my final thought. It's um, it's a great play. This it's a, uh, I I I like it more and more. Um, but uh, yes, I, I'm trying not to imagine where it's going because I've been very careful not to read ahead, mm. which has been a little unfortunate as it meant I got. Uh, taken aback by things <laughs> and I would have given stress d quite different stresses to my lines if I'd actually understood what they were. Mm. Welcome to my world Helen. Uh, um, <laughs> but that's what this, this this experience is all about diving down the wrong alley uh, to discover the right one um, yes because I mean you you flagged a really important point earlier about you know this speech uh, you know what this speech is doing you yeah. know how do we communicate it to the audience well we don't need to because it's it, there's a scene that does that the playwright had, you know, did, did understand that the joke doesn't come across or that joke doesn't co come across the first time. Whether it's a bit excessive and a bit tedious, um, you know, is, is really down to the playing and I, yeah. you know, and, and to the performance. I think it's, uh, it's one of those things that could feel self-indulgent or not. Mm. Um, you know, uh, Lynn, final thought. A couple of things. I hope I don't take too much time. Um, yeah, back to time. Um, Constance, Constance, um, I mean, I think Sarah had a really nice insight that she goes from being very proper, very correct. Now we have to do everything according to the social, the social expectations to just kind of sputtering frustrated and angry. But there's also, I think, a consistency to her. She's, mm -hmm. uh, she's in charge. She's in charge of her servants. She's not going to let this doltish suit her, um, uh, talk her into doing something she doesn't want to. She's always in this posi position of authority, which I really like about, um, about a female character. So, uh, so even, even though he kind of does get under her skin, she's still in a position of, of power and authority, which, which is really nice. I, I mean, I, I, I really like that, that, that somebody's, um, constructed the character that way and there was one moment that we kind of glossed over because we were so um interested in the the two versions of the letter that i i found really intriguing that moment where mary greek is saying oh if i were a woman i would be so in love with you oh, yes. Yeah. yes and and, he, and he's like no no i would be really attracted to you if i were a woman like what is going on here <laughs> Yeah, that's, yes. And I mean, just thinking about the fact that these were not mature young men, it, it's kind of creeping me out a little bit, actually. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really probable that, you know, that the, the whole company is made up of boys um, yeah. for this. So, you know, there, there, there's an awful lot of, there, there is something that is a bit creepy out about the whole boys company stuff. Uh, mm. it's, it's effective. Um, but yeah, there's, there, there is stuff that can, can definitely create a bit of a weird ick factor. Um, Alan. Yeah, I'm, I must admit the one bit we sort passed over without comment was during the point at which Royster is claiming he's dying mm. and basically says, I think the text actually says, um, he says to Mary Greek, I will make you my sector, which I actually read as factor. No, it's executor. executor. Ah, oh, right. Um, but if effectively, what you got there was Mary Greek is getting the the opportunity to exploit somebody else's assets, which is his entire game, and that may then echo down into the bit that Lynn was then referring to. You know that basically Mary Greek is after the money and sod the rest of it. Sorry, mm -hmm. wrong choice of uh, term, but. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah it's, he's, he is tying himself into his household, uh, and, but it's through this make-believe. 
I mean, this is the thing is that, you know, we've, we've spent a lot of time talking about customs um, um, because actually her motivations and her character are very, very clear. Whereas we got Royster, Doyster and Mary Greek who are much more performative in mm. a sense of we're not really sure why they're doing a lot of the things they're doing. They're not quite from the same universe. Um, and they're a big double act. You know, the bulk of this play is them doing double act stuff, mm. which is again, drawing us back to Jack Juggler, which is primarily a double act between two actors. It's, it's you know, there are some other people in it as well, but basically it's two actors showing off. And, you know, this feels very much in the same vein with then this extended, uh, you know, then we sort of go up to Customs, who's the next largest character, as far as I can tell. And then you've got everybody else who are sort of, you know, uh, turns. And it's that question of actually how, how doubleable this is, how it functions as a doubling, if it is designed to be doubled or whether it's just designed to function with different abilities of cast members um because there's there's lots of characters who sort of pop in for a bit but then irritatingly all turn up at the end um sarah if it was a boys company play though i mean i don't know that much about them but presumably they didn't have the same uh constraints in terms of they had they presumably had a lot of boys there who could perform so they didn't need to double in the same way that a touring company would well, it's it's tricky because they uh, we can't be certain precisely how it all uh, then continues as well. The the life after um, you know that that this play has a has a hinterland as well. So mm. it might be that it it was performed once or twice with an original company, but then it might have a function as a touring entity. Taken on a lot right. of interludes do, and you know then. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, this one is more, seems more designed for that, but, you know, it could be wrong just because it's written by a schoolmaster doesn't automatically mean that uh, it's presented by, by, by the children. Mm. Uh, that's one for more research. I'm genuinely plucking some of that out of the air. Um, but, you know, whereas Jack Juggler is designed for about four people and could probably be done basically with three, um, you know, uh, no, no, five people, get, you get it down to four. Uh, this one is slightly more extensive and it's just that thought about what's it designed to do and who's it designed for and who's going to be watching it and whether it has a hinterland afterwards. We know mm. that Gamma Gurdon's Needle had a massive success and, you know, seemed to be performed for years. Its name changes. Was that written by Udall as well? No, it's written by someone mm. else. It's very similar in style, but it's clearly a different voice. Mm. Um, but it starts off, or it seems to start off as a play called Dickon, the, bed, uh, the Bedlam. And then eventually over time, someone goes, well, what's the play about? Well, it's about Gamma Girton. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it is all centred around what the Bedlam does and what that character does in that play. Um, so I don't know whether Royster Doyster has the same sort of later hinterland, whether it ends up touring and um, what scripts they're basing that on. And Because, you know, it, it, 10 years passed before this gets printed. Mm. Uh, over 10 years before this gets printed. So uh, th there's all sorts of questions in my mind about the scale and the scope of what it might be um, for us today as much for what they did then. I mean, you know, hey, I don't really care how they staged it then. I just really care about how I might stage it now. Um, yeah. How small can I get the cast? How extreme can I make the doubling? Uh, how silly can I make the doubling? And were you saying that it, um, was, this, was this the text that got reprinted a lot over the next few decades? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head if it gets, uh, I fairly certainly, it, it, it may have a decent print history. Um, it certainly is, it, it's... It, it just it, feels so familiar. It's just like, this must have been tremendously influential in later comedy. It's, well, the term Royster Doyster seems to be, you know, a generic term. I don't know whether it's a generic <laughs> term because of this play or whether it, um, it's, uh, you know, and this helps build it. Um... I think we think of it as being a well-known play in part because we, it's well-known today within, if you know that period, this is the play you'll probably have heard of. So I wonder if that's a false sense of its popularity. Yeah. It's actually, it's, it's popular now and it, does, it actually disappeared without trace. I don't see actually any reprinting, um, excessive number of reprintings here. Um, it was not printed again. No, so it disappears without a trace. So that must be another play. 
Um, mm. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, I think we've discussed that at some length. Tomorrow we're finishing the play off. Welcome for the dramatic and hopefully hilarious conclusion of uh, Ralph Royster Doyster uh, when we get into that tomorrow with many of the same people as today. All that remains is thank all the readers today and goodbye. Bye. Bye.